The Go Higher podcast is provided by The High Program at Wayne State University. The High Program, helping individuals go higher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Go Higher podcast, where we're taking tough and relevant subjects in everyone's day-to-day lives and providing insight on how to respond, resolve, and re-inspire yourself and those around you. Going to college is the first choice many young people make as an adult entering life after high school. The decision is never easy, but for people with minority identities, it can be even more difficult to navigate the complex world of higher education. What factors into the struggles of being a student while also being part of a disenfranchised community? A significant factor in whether or not young adults have the ability to go to college is family income. With the gap in wages between those with minority identities, people of color, the LGBTQ community, and people with disabilities, and those who do not have minority identities affecting overall family income, there is a higher chance that disenfranchised families will have lower income in comparison to those who are more privileged. In the 2017 Income and Poverty Report from the United States Census Bureau, it was reported that the median household income in the U.S. was $61,372, while Hispanic families of any race made an average of $50,486, along with black families making an average of $40,258 annually. In comparison, while white families made an average of $68,145, which is above the national average. Participation rates. Who is enrolling in higher education in the fall after graduating from high school? Research done by the Pell Institute and the Penn Ahead Alliance for Higher Education and Democracy showed that in 2016, 78% of 18 to 24-year-olds whose family income was $124,000 and above enrolled in post-secondary education in the fall after graduating high school, compared to the 46% whose family income was less than $37,500. There was no statistical information provided based off family income here at Wayne State, but in the winter of 2019, the majority of students were full-time white undergraduates with the largest age group of students being 20 to 21 years old. With a better idea of who enrolls in college after high school, we can now look into underlying factors that may make it more difficult to pursue a degree. Race, ethnicity. Many students who are considered racial minorities are also first-generation students, according to research gathered by the post-secondary National Policy Institute, PNPI. An estimated 42% of black students and 48% of Hispanic students were first-generation students compared to 28% of white students who were first-generation. Being the first person to pursue a degree in your family is an act of courage. But unfortunately, in being the first person to go to college in your family, you may not be as prepared as students whose parents have attended college and have knowledge of how the system works. In addition to this, the gap in college preparation between black and white recent high school graduates has not only stayed stable from 1976 to 2016, but has eventually widened from an 8% difference to a 15% difference. With the widening disparity of college participation amongst people of different races, it can be difficult to ensure every student has the tools they'll need to succeed. Gender and wages. Although just over half of the population is female, women face challenges in higher education that men do not. While women are the majority of college campuses at 54.9% of undergraduate students and 59.8% of graduate students, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, there is still a large wage gap between men and women who have received bachelor's degrees. On average, women who have earned a bachelor's degree have a weekly salary of $1,131 compared to men 
average weekly salary of $1,481. Although women may be earning degrees at a higher rate, they are not being paid the same amount as men with the same level of education. College is expensive, and it can be difficult to be paid less for the same level of education. LGBTQ plus community. Being a part of the LGBTQ community can present unique issues when it comes to navigating higher education, sexual orientation, and gender identity are not demographics that are recorded traditionally when researching college students or in census information so it is difficult to determine its impact on overall participation and completion rates in college. There is research, however, in some of the underlying stressors that LGBTQ plus community encounter as students. LGBTQ plus students were found more likely to be victims of sexual harassment or assault, according to a 2015 climate survey by the Association of American Universities, AAU. In addition to this, 20% of students of the LGBTQ plus community also reported that they felt afraid for their safety due to their gender identity or perceived sexual orientation. Stressful and often painful interactions like this can get in the way of academic performance. When someone does not feel safe in the place that they are supposed to be learning, they are not in an environment that is geared toward their success. Homelessness, students who work. The U.S. Integrity Council on Homelessness found that of the 8,351 homeless people in Michigan, 604 were unaccompanied young adults from ages 18 to 24. Student homelessness is among the fastest growing demographic in the country, which is an important factor in the decision on whether or not to pursue a degree. Many struggle to find the balance between being available to provide for themselves and earning a degree. Focusing on school isn't always a student's only priority. Many students also work while they are in school. The National Center for Educational Statistics found that 81% of part-time students and 43% of full-time students work while in school. It is also difficult to manage two very time-consuming tasks, and if you aren't careful, it's easy to stretch yourself too thin. To make a long point short, students in higher education who are a part of a disenfranchised community have a more difficult time succeeding because of the additional obstacles that they face. Some of these factors have to do with generational status in college, economic status, racial or ethnicity, sexual orientation or gender expression. Tip of the day. If you are a student with a minority identity, it can be difficult to know what resources are available to you at your university. Talking with college advisors may help you. Here are a few questions to keep in mind when speaking to an advisor. Are there any organizations on campus that cater to my specific needs? See if you can find a system of support to help you through your college career in an organization, whether that's a club, support group, or Greek life that is focused on your community. This is important to find, especially in your specific field of study. Finding a place where you feel welcome will help you put you on the path to success. Who can I talk to if I'm struggling with academics? It can be difficult to balance all of your new adult responsibilities with the high demand of college academics. Ask your advisor about the best ways to ask your professor for help. How to use resources like a math or writing lab or study groups and how to set a schedule that's manageable for your specific needs. If you are a resident, you can also talk to your RA. They're likely to know a lot of resources available on your campus. How do I navigate scholarships and financial aid? There are many scholarships that are dedicated to marginalized communities, like scholarships specifically for women, people of color, students with disabilities, and the LGBTQ community. See if your advisor can help you find scholarships or other financial assistance that is right for you when your tuition bill comes in and you're struggling to make ends meet. 
here at Wayne State. You can also look through a specific portal for scholarships at wayne.edu slash scholarships. That's www.wayne.edu slash scholarships. College can be difficult, but for some students, financial issues can make things impossible. The High program at Wayne State University provides critical funds to students who are having major issues with basic needs like tuition, books, housing, and food. It's amazing, but just a few hundred dollars at the right time can save a student from dropping out or from being homeless. Students should not have to decide between basic life needs and finishing their education. The High program has connected hundreds of students with these basic needs and provided a light at the end of the tunnel for what amounts to the most difficult period of their young lives. If you would like to help, donations of any amount are welcome. And you can find all our information on highprogram.wayne.edu or at WSU High Program.